There are things you will have seen several times. For example, your own face. You've probably seen that loads, especially if you're a proud owner of a mirror. But that's not the sort of thing we're going to show you today. These are things you'll see for the first time in your life. Number 20. A guy popping a grass bubble. There are probably few things as unusual to find in your backyard than a massive bubble of grass, but they do happen. They are known as water beds and not the fun type you have in your bedroom. When the ground is completely saturated and the earth can no longer soak up any more moisture, any extra water creates a bubble underneath the surface of the grass. It's noticeable by its squishiness, and here's what happens when you pop a grass bubble. It's far more intense than popping a pimple, that's for sure. A Pennsylvania man found one in his backyard and started stabbing it with garbage garden utensils to try to relieve some of the pressure and flatten out the lumps. At first, it didn't seem to matter how many holes he poked in it. Nothing budged. The water stayed inside the huge bubble. But the man must have hit the sweet spot because, before you know it, he has a massive flow of water coming out one side of the bubble. The more he pushes on it, the more water comes out. Eventually, he'll have his flat piece of lawn back again without incident. But that doesn't mean this won't happen again. Water beds or grass bubbles are caused by lawns being so saturated that the ground can't hold any more water. When more water is added, it seeps through to the sod, which can cause it to sit on top of the grass and create a bubble underneath it. The grass bubbles are often caused by heavy rain, but you can actually do it yourself accidentally by overwatering your lawn. Like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 19. Whale Heart. We all know whales are pretty big, but it's hard to imagine what their oversized organs would look like. Sometimes, it's not until you learn more about them or compare them to other large things that you gain a sense of just how big they really are. The whale heart is definitely something you'll be shocked about. It weighs about 400 pounds, which is basically the same weight as an adult male lion. The size is just as surprising, with there being not much difference between the heart of a whale and a golf cart. Even the aortas are huge, with the the widest one being about the size of a dinner plate. If you ever notice a strange beating sound in the water while you're out diving or swimming, it's not just your imagination. If a whale is within two miles of you, you're likely hearing its heartbeat. Although it only pumps up to about 37 times a minute, and its heart slows up to eight beats a minute while diving, and even down to two beats a minute to save oxygen. A whale that washed up on the shores of Newfoundland was put to good use when its heart was taken, preserved, and put on display in the Royal Ontario museum. It's the first and only preserved blue whale heart and shows the incredible size and complexity of it. Number 18. Helicopter used in transmission line tower transportation. It can be quite frustrating when the power goes out and you wonder what's taken the power company so long to put it back on. But are you aware of just how complicated transmission line towers can be? When you see them being put into place for the first time by helicopters, you may gain some insight into just how challenging it is. When a Sky Crane helicopter was videoed lifting a transmission line tower into place near Roosevelt in Washington, people got to see that it wasn't just a five minute job. There are no roads up to where many of these towers are installed, so they have to be helicoptered in and put in place. Then, the fun part begins with making sure they can transmit power where it needs to be. So now you know why laying hundreds of miles of transmissions takes such a long time. Even 30 miles a line takes a considerable amount of money and months and months of work. A Senate Democratic Policy Committee report found that the cost per mile for transmission is about $1.5 million to $2 million. And to keep up with demand, the investment in transmission would need to be about $300 billion. You might just be seeing a few more helicopters around. Number 17. No crying in space. Big girls don't cry, and now astronauts don't? What is the world coming to? But it's not that astronauts in space aren't allowed to cry. Could you imagine? Houston, we have a problem. Keep it together, Neil. No, it's that they can't. You can actually form tears in space, and there probably have been many tears formed during challenging parts of missions, but as soon as you try and shed those tears, you're in for a battle. 
they don't fall. Instead, if you cry in space, the water just builds up in your eye until you have a massive bubble of water around your eyes that you have to remove, or it'll just move to another part of your face. It's actually quite weird to watch. ISS Commander Chris Hadfield demonstrated it happening in a YouTube video. He couldn't cry on demand like some of the best actors, so he just squeezed some drinking water around his eye. All it did was bubble around his eye, move slightly down the eye, and then pull on his face. The good news is, it's such a hilarious sight that if you're a sad astronaut who's crying, you can at least have a good laugh about how silly you look. Number 16. How to Freeze Soap Bubbles have you ever seen a frozen bubble? Probably not. As soon as you blow a bubble, it usually pops in an instant, but that doesn't happen all the time. You can actually turn soap bubbles into frozen orbs if you live somewhere cold enough. Chris Ratzlaff, a photographer, loves creating soap bubbles at home and taking photos of the freezing process. He said bubbles are such ephemeral things that freezing them in time is a rare experience. There's actually a lot of science involved, but we'll try not to make it boring for you. All bubbles have three layers, two layers of soap and a thin layer of water molecules sandwiched between them. As the bubble's freezing, it can look like the entire thing is freezing, but it's actually just the water layer that freezes at warmer temperatures than the soap does. Just like unfrozen bubbles, though, they don't stick around. Cracks form on the surface, causing air to escape. The air then causes a drop in internal pressure, making the bubble implode. Well, it was fun while it lasted. You can make these yourself at home as long as you live somewhere so, so cold that it's like negative 13 degrees Fahrenheit or negative 25 degrees Celsius. You'll need warm water for freezing, dish soap for the bubbles, corn syrup to add some thickness, and sugar to make it crystallize. Number 15. Flood Tunnel in Tokyo Tokyo is no stranger to flooding. The Japanese capital city sits on a plain with dozens of rivers and five colossal river systems. Each season, these swell and the extraction of water has caused regions to sink, exacerbating the problem and increasing the flooding risk. The city is in such a volatile position that water management expert Cecilia Tortajada jokingly said, I don't know who decided to set up Tokyo there. To deal with severe flooding events and maybe even prevent the loss of life in the future, the city built a massive network of tunnels and chambers to protect the north of Tokyo from flooding, or at least to try. And it's an incredible engineering marvel that you may not have seen in any other town, city, or even country. Once you're inside the giant water tank, you're surrounded by substantial 500-ton pillars that support the ceiling, and you feel like you're in some kind of shrine. The Floodwater Cathedral is hidden about 22 meters or 72 feet underground and forms part of the Metropolitan Area Outer Underground Discharge Channel. It's a nearly four-mile-long system of tunnels that began taking shape in the post-war years. In 1947, Typhoon Kathleen hit Tokyo, killing 1,100 people and destroying 31,000 homes. Another typhoon, 10 years later, destroyed homes and businesses after 400 millimeters of rain fell in a single week. That's nearly 16 inches. After those events, Japan really upped its investment in flood protection. Number 14. Great Wall of China We've built some pretty incredible structures in recent years, but perhaps few as unbelievable as the Great Wall of China. And they didn't have half the technology we have at our fingertips now. The Great Wall of China is a huge bulwark or solid wall created in ancient China and remains one of the largest building construction projects ever undertaken. The Great Wall may look like one wall, but it's actually several, and many of them are parallel to each other. The walls were crafted over two millennia from northern China to southern Mongolia, and some of the best preserved parts of the wall date back to the Ming Dynasty and span about 5,500 miles. To say it's an incredible wall is an understatement. It snakes around hills and mountains and makes use of natural barriers along the way, like mountain ridges. Many parts of the wall are now in ruins or are gone altogether, but the Great Wall of China is still one of the most incredible structures on Earth. That's probably why it was made a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1987. But the question on many people's minds is likely, why? Well, invasions, raids, and neighbors, that's why. Walls keep you safe, and that was pretty much their goal. Number 13. The Surface of the Moon 
The surface of the moon has probably been something you've questioned at some point in time. Why does it look like it does? And what are all those textures and bumps and dents? The light and dark patches, the circles and streaks, the weird colors? It's all so absurd looking, and that's even before you use a telescope to look a bit closer. Truth is, the moon has seen some stuff. The huge indents come from oceans of molten rock, and the small little impact points come from the matter that has been ejected. And the rings on the surface? Well, those are formed by huge numbers of impact craters. Everyone's hating on the moon. Then there are all those dark patches. These consist of a strange type of soil. Before Apollo 11, no one actually knew if they'd be able to walk on that soil. There were concerns that it would be so soft they would just sink into it. When the crew landed safely, their fears were alleviated as they were able to walk on it just fine. They took 382 kilograms, or over 840 pounds, of that soil back to Earth to find out more about it since it covered the entire surface. It turns out it has been created over the last 4.5 billion in years from micrometeorites on the moon. The soil is similar to the basalt rock we have in volcanic regions, and it's rich in magnesium, oxygen, silicon, calcium, and iron. Number 12. Animal Sneezing Sneezing is something we do and think nothing of, but when your pet sneezes, there might be many, many reasons for it. Before we get into worst case scenarios, sneezing generally means your pet's nasal cavity has been irritated by something. That might be an airborne irritant like an aerosol spray, dust, fumes, or powder, or a foreign material like plants. Nasal mites in dogs are also possible, even though it's pretty rare. However, sneezing can also signal an upper respiratory infection that kind of looks like the symptoms of a human cold. You might notice that alongside sneezing, your pet is coughing and has a runny nose or eyes. Dogs and cats can catch the flu, with dogs spreading it through respiratory secretions while cats catch it from viral particles or other infected cats. Dogs can also cough when they have kennel cough, a highly contagious condition caused by the upper airway being affected by bacteria and viruses. A sore throat sometimes accompanies a dry, hacking cough, loss of appetite, and eye discharge. Scarily, if sneezing isn't a cold-related issue, it might relate to cancer, bronchitis, distemper, lung problems, or heart disease. If your pet starts to sneeze a lot, it may pay to book them into your local vet clinic. Number 11. A Full Circle Rainbow Rainbows are always a delightful surprise after a thunderstorm. It's like Mother Nature is rewarding you for putting up with it, and you get to see something pretty after gray skies for so long. Typically, they appear in the sky like a vibrant, colorful arch. But guess what? They're actually a complete circle, and people have been lucky enough to see them in their complete form. We generally see them as arches because they're partially blocked by the horizon on the ground. You'll need to find a high vantage point like the sky. Pilots see them all the time, and even some skydivers. Rainbows are made when light hits water droplets. You might see them after a storm, but they're also present in fog, waterfalls, and sea spray. Where you see them can depend on where you're standing and the light source. Usually, the source of light is behind you, and the rainbow comes from the reflection or refraction of the light. The light entering the water droplets is refracted, then reflected by the back of the droplet. As the refracted light exits the droplet, it's refracted at different angles. The rainbow displays as a spectrum of light with red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. Our eyes see all colors as white light, but when the sun hits a rain droplet, the different angles create different wavelengths that allow us to see all the colors. Number 10. Pollen Cloud from Falling Tree if you get seasonal allergies, you'd be an oozing, dripping, snotty mess if you were near a river birch tree being chopped down in Hickson, Tennessee, north of Chattanooga. Timberlines Outdoors LLC shared a video of them chopping down a branch from a tree when the motion causes pollen to shake loose from the tree. As it falls, the pollen creates this massive yellow cloud about 10 feet in the air. It's so thick that as it falls off the tree, it actually makes the outline of the tree it's leaving. There's no denying it it is an incredible sight, but allergy sufferers everywhere are probably crying right now. 
pollen is one of the leading causes of allergies in the U.S. It's a fine powder found in weeds, grass, trees, and flowers, fertilizing plants. It's helpful for plants, but not for us. Many people experience an immune response when they breathe it in. The body thinks it's a harmful intruder and starts trying to fight it. It does this by making your eyes water, stuffing up your nose, and making you sneeze. Some people experience these symptoms year-round, while others only have them when certain trees with specific pollen types are in bloom. And sometimes you can just develop these allergies. I had seasonal allergies this past spring or something for the first time in my life. It was weird. Number 9. How Sugar Is Made Sugar seems to be in nearly everything we eat. You might have a spoonful in your morning coffee, or you might get way too much of it in your pick-me-up energy drink in the afternoon. But have you ever taken a moment to think about how it's made? Sugar comes from the sugar cane, a perennial grass that grows in warm climates like Brazil and even parts of the U.S. like Texas and Florida. The Domino Sugar brand you may know is from the American Sugar Refining Group in southern Florida. Once the sugar cane plant is fully mature, it's harvested and sent to a sugar mill for processing. The stalks are washed, cut into shreds, and pressed in rollers. In this process, the juice from the plant is separated out and then boiled until it becomes crystallized. Using a centrifuge, the crystals are separated from the liquid, which results in raw sugar. The raw sugar is still impure, so it's sent to a refinery for filtering. What happens here can depend on the type of sugar they're trying to make. We have access to raw sugar, powdered sugar, golden sugar, brown sugar, and granulated white sugar. Number 8. Bizarre Beach Blobs Have you ever seen a white, fleshy, blobby, disgusting thing on the beach as you've gone for a dip or walk along the shore? You might have found a sea pork. Sea porks, also known as tunicates, are marine invertebrates that can form huge colonies. In these colonies, they filter the seas, so they have quite an important job to do. They have sack-filled bodies filled with water and two openings that they use to draw in water and expel it. They're pretty common around South Carolina waters and often stick to jetties, docks, boats, and pilings. As they're a subtital species, they're generally easy to spot from low tide to 30 feet deep, feasting on bottom-dwelling sharks, skates, and fish. By the time we see them on the shore, they're normally dead, which is how they get their name of sea pork. They turn a pale white color once dead, which makes them look a bit like salt pork or fat. Sea porks are incredibly important for the ecosystem because of their filtering capabilities, but they're also a bit of a pest. They can invade an area and even harm seafood like scallops and oysters. Some cultures have used them in cuisine, but they have poisonous flesh, so that's not really recommended that you eat them. Number 7. Hot Bubbling Mud Many of us enjoyed the fun childhood activity of playing in the mud. You might have mixed water with dirt in your backyard to create mud pies, or you were fortunate enough to jump in some muddy puddles. At the time, you may not have realized that you didn't need to give up your love of mud as you got older, because age-appropriate mud activities exist. For example, if you pay a visit to Rotorua in New Zealand, you'll be able to get your fill of mud at the many mud pools. There are many geothermal attractions and bubbling mud pools in this town. Hell's Gate would have to be one of the most well-known, and it's where you can see mud pools, steaming cliffs, and the biggest hot waterfall in the Southern Hemisphere. You can also experience the healing properties of the thermal mud and sulfur mineral water. Local Maori have been using this water for over 800 years. You might also desire a trip to the Salton Buttes, which are volcanoes in California on the Salton Sea. There are five lava domes in a 4.3-mile row called North Red Hill, Mullet Island, South Red Hill, Rock Hill, and Obsidian Butte. Number 6. Bleeding Tooth Fungus Nature can be wonderful, but it can also be disgusting. There's one plant in particular that might make your stomach turn, and that's known as bleeding tooth fungus. It also gets called strawberries and cream and devil's tooth, but its scientific name is Hydnellum pecchii. This unique fungus has little points that look like teeth, and these produce spores. So with red goo oozing out of it and strange long teeth, it's hard not to see why people would call it bleeding tooth fungus. They mainly grow in woodland areas and have a symbiotic relationship with birch, pine, and oak trees. 
They grow in loose, sandy soil, so it's not uncommon to see them around quarries and near banks, but they don't usually grow with other vegetation. Bleeding tooth fungus loves to spread out, and how they do this is quite unique. They move their roots from one tree to the next, and the entire process can take years. And what's that red goo? I thought you'd never ask. The red goo is just the plant's sap. It's not actually blood, if you hadn't already figured that out. The red pigment is a natural part of the plant, and when the water's being pushed through from the roots to the surface, it's turned red. Number 5. Popcorn Popped on the Cob you might have seen a few ridiculous videos of people putting corn cobs in the microwave covered in butter and seeing them being removed as big cobs of popped corn ready to eat. Most of these videos aren't legitimate, but you might be surprised to learn that you can microwave a corn cob and have it turn into popcorn. You just have to have the right corn cob. Sweet corn doesn't work. The popcorn kernels you buy in your local grocery store have come from corn cobs that have been harvested, shucked, dried, and decobbed. But if you buy the same corn cobs that are used in this process, you can actually microwave them whole in your own home microwave. You need to purchase dried corn on the cob and make sure it's completely dry before you use it. Place it in a medium-sized brown bag and secure it closed with something that's safe for the microwave. Microwave it on high for up to four minutes or until the popcorn slows down to one or two pops every few seconds. You can then remove the bag from the microwave, carefully open it, and add flavors you like such as salt and butter. Number 4. Oak Leaf Butterfly the way we camouflage when we go into the wilderness for some hunting or fishing is going to seem a bit ridiculous when you see how a nymphalid butterfly, known as Kalima Inukus, does it. They are the masters of camouflage, so much so that you would never spot one if you didn't see them transform right in front of your eyes. These butterflies go by many names like dead leaf, Indian oak leaf, and orange oak leaf. They look like a dry leaf with dark veins when they close their wings. There's simply no telling that they aren't a dry leaf. These butterflies are found in tropical Asia and are extremely beautiful when they're showing off their wings. There are deep shades of blue, orange, and black, and there are a few small brown patches along their 4.3-inch wingspan. As birds quite often pursue them, they drop into foliage, stand stock still, and close their wings. Birds rarely find them once they camouflage themselves. Number 3. Monotropa uniflora one of the strangest plants you'd probably ever encounter is the Monotropa uniflora, also known as the ghost plant, ghost pipe, and Indian pipe. They are perennial plants from Asia, North America, and South America, and appear waxy white with some black flecks or pale pink coloring. Some of the rarer varieties are deep red. We know that most plants contain chlorophyll, but the ghost plant is different. Oh, it's so cool. It's parasitic, so it relies on fungi instead of getting food by using energy from the sun. It gets its food from photosynthetic trees and can grow in dark environments like dense forests since it doesn't need sunlight to grow. They can grow up to about 12 inches long and have weird leaves that look like scales. They also have a single flower that grows up to nearly an inch long with up to eight translucent petals. This flower appears from about early summer to early fall, and during this time, an oval, capsule-like fruit appears. The flowers of the ghost plant are visited by bumblebees and other bee and fly species. Bumblebees are incredibly important to the plant as they disperse their pollen. Number 2. Wolf Eel just when you thought regular eels weren't scary enough, the ocean came out with a wolf eel. And I'd be the first to say it is way scarier than any regular eel. Wolf eel species are a species of wolf fish from the North Pacific that grow up to about 7 feet long. Unlike true eels, they have paired gill slits and pectoral fins. The young eels have orange bodies with dark spots, and they turn olive, brown, or gray as they mature. Probably the scariest feature about this creature is the teeth. They have powerful jaws that they use to crush their prey, consisting of canine teeth in the front and molars in the posterior part of the mouth. As they spend a lifetime chomping down on hard things like crabs, their teeth can be pretty worn down by the time they're old. And as far as we know, there are no underwater dentists. As fearful as they are, they seem to be quite good parents. Experts believe they mate for life, and they will both take care of their eggs. One eel will stay back and protect them, while the other goes out for a delicious crab meal. 
Number 1. Glowing Ghost Mushrooms Ghost mushrooms, known as Omphalotus nidiformis or something like that, are bioluminescent fungi that produce a soft green glow at night. This is caused by a chemical reaction between oxygen and fungal enzymes. At night, the glow can be so bright you can read words on a piece of paper next to it. They are mainly found in southern Australia and Tasmania, but some were also reported in India in 2012 and 2018. They require very specific growing conditions, but people have been attempting to grow them at home. Australian woman Karen Thomas collected a ghost mushroom, placed it on cardboard, and put it inside an airtight container. After 24 hours, the mushroom dropped its spores, which Karen scraped off and put in water inside a sterilized jar. She added food like brown rice flour that would encourage growth. Karen said they grow like edible mushrooms, so they love husks and grains. But once it starts growing, it can be put into a more natural environment, so Karen had set up logs of wood with dowels poked into them outside. Here, she leaves them to grow and thrive. Most of us don't get to see or experience anything out of the ordinary, but you're surely clued up on what's possible when you step outside your comfort zone. Who knew the moon could have such crazy features, or that Tokyo could be so prepared for serious floods? Did you learn anything new? Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time!